name is Lorena Fikes, and I'm part of our marketing team here at Tatango. I'm excited for today's webinar, our product deep dive on digitizing data with Rapid Insight Forms. Um, before we introduce our speakers, we wanna go over a couple housekeeping items. The webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel within the next 24 hours. So visit us at Everything Customer Success and you'll be able to find um, the recording of this webinar. All attendees are placed in listen mode only. There is a Q and I icon at the bottom of your webinar window where you can uh, submit any questions which we will be answering at the end of the webinar. Um, and you can also join us in chat if you have any questions, any concerns or something's not working, um, we'll be able to respond. And welcome to those that have already joined us from South Carolina, Florence, from Boston, from North Carolina. We love seeing um, everyone and where they're from. So thank you. And I will pass it on to our speakers today to introduce themselves. Thank you, Lorena. Uh, my name is Vijay, Vijay Rao. Uh, I'm director of product here at Tango. I've been with Tango for about two years now. Uh, glad to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Berman. Um, I'm a customer strategy manager at Seven Rooms um, and I've helped to fully strategize and deploy to Tango at Seven Rooms. Thank you, Brittany. All right, so this is what we're gonna be covering today. Uh, the importance of digitizing data, uh, which is even more critical with distributed teams. Uh, how can Rapid Insight Forms uh, be useful and how can you use it for your organization? And then we'll also hear from Brittany on how they've streamlined their onboarding process using these forms. So, all right, with that, we'll get started. <clears throat> so obviously every organization has customer data in one form or another. Uh, what we're talking about is there are uh, two basic uh, types of customer uh, information that's in your uh, organization. Uh, the typical structured format already exists in various systems and CRM systems, data warehouses, other usage systems. And this data is, um, you know, is easier to handle in the sense that, you know, you can harness it with connectors, with uh, standardized processes to uh, gather this data. And then there is the second kind of data, which is primarily the untapped data in this, uh, and also this is the data that you accumulate or generate based on the numerous interactions that you have with your customers over the customer's uh, lifetime. And most times, uh, this type of data remains in people's uh, heads, uh, they're sort of carrying it around with them or typically stored offline in, uh, you know, spreadsheets or presentations tucked away and never sees uh, light. And we're going to be focusing on primarily uh, this uh, second type of uh, uh, data. Now, uh, there are some challenges because of which uh, this data continues in that uh, format. Typically with this type of data, there is a lack of a structured process to harness it and collate it. Uh, and especially important to have that uh, you know, happen at a timely manner. And because of this lack of process, what you end up seeing is that various silos form within an organization because data sharing is not facilitated or like, you know, like I said, uh, a lack of generalized process. And then this is typically even more exacerbated, uh, this problem when you have, uh, you know, customers being handed off from one teams to another, uh, and there is a uh, loss of transmission that is happening uh, uh, as uh, customers uh, start engaging from one team to another. Also, this is not something that you may have thought of. Uh, there is typically some additional information that you might want to leverage, but it's typically hard to leverage uh, because it might be buried in documents or contracts and someone closest to it has the most access to it or has the ability to translate it. But again, without a standardized process and means to uh, uh, gather it and retrieve it, this information gets lost. All right. Uh, what I wanted to do was uh, just wanted to get a sort of show of hands on this. So Lorena, if you can just trigger a poll, our first poll, just to get a sense of 
you know, if this sort of information silos exist within your organization, um, and uh, if you are doing customer handoffs, it will be good to hear uh, from uh, all of you. So yes, the poll is now on your screen. You should be able to see it and vote yes or no regarding this question. If you do not see the poll on your screen, you can always respond in our chat as well. I'm sorry, I said raise your hand. Uh, what I meant was uh, by, raise your hand by responding to the poll. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it looks like a couple of people are not able to see the poll. Um, and so we're struggling with that, but they are saying yes in the chat. Got it. Okay. So All right. So we'll yeah. move on. So what I wanted to talk about is the fact that because of the, um, uh, the inability to harness this information, uh, you're going to have uh, some missed outcomes because of that. And let's look at what some of those are. Obviously, uh, uh, the ability to scale is an important aspect and having a standardized process and being able, able to digitize this information um, helps with the, uh, the scaling process. Also, when you have teams constantly asking the same information uh, to customers because of the uh, fact of uh, lack of handoff between data, uh, organizations can be perceived uh, as disorganized. And it also ends up having a uh, poor experience uh, for customers. Uh, it's not just about also the experience, but the fact that you're not able to uh, harness and leverage this data is also a lost opportunity uh, in, in terms of being able to add value to the customer, be able to connect with the customer, and uh, actually delight the customer. So all of this results in a poor experience, and then eventually if this repeats over and over again, customers eventually lose trust. Uh, so what what is the solution? So this rapid insight forms that we built was meant to precisely handle these type of scenarios. And it's a perfect uh, means to gather a set of information uh, that you want from at any different points and from any uh, particular individual uh, that has this information. So the first piece of the forms designer uh, in forms is the ability for you as administrators to be able to create these forms. These forms are very similar to survey type forms that you can quickly put together with a set of fields that you want to gather the information on. You can send these forms out very easily, uh, either manually or you can send them in an automated manner based on uh, you know, various information that you're segmenting on within Totango via success plays. So that makes it very efficient from that perspective. And then the the main value prop of this is also the fact that filling out a form is uh, really simple and pleasing and uh, it really takes the stress out of having to fill this information and that just lends itself very seamlessly to this type of activity and uh, what we've also done is we've uh, tried to uh, you know uh, ensure that you're able to bring in uh, any uh, role or function within your organization into the mix and gather data from them. So from that perspective, forms can be sent out to Spark or so users. And also, yes, they are mobile friendly. So anyone can just be on, the, uh, on their mobile device and fill it out. Okay, so let's take a look at it, uh, a short demonstration, and then we will um, uh, go from there. So. Uh, I, I'm in a demo instance, and what you can do is, as uh, administrators, the first step is, of course, to uh, def define the forms uh, in a forms designer. So if you go to global settings engagement, you have an option here called rapid insight forms. Now, if you don't have any forms created, you will not see it appearing in anywhere in the application, which is why uh, you probably have missed it or you may not have seen it. Uh, creating a form is re uh, really simple. Now there are two types of forms that you can create. You can create a form where you're requesting information from someone, or you, you also have the ability to create a form to create a new account in the system. Uh, um, I don't intend to go into the details of creating the account other than to say that there are, there are some customers who are not necessarily integrated with CRM systems and if they just want the ability to create accounts within 
uh, to Tango, they can use the create account form. But what we're going to focus on is this request information form. Uh, creating a form is as simple as uh, giving a name and choosing an account type. If this uh, form applies to certain account types in the system, you can add a section, give it a name, and very easily start either adding uh, entire dimensions of attributes into the form or even uh, you know choose individual fields uh, for example uh, you know I can choose a peer CJ can uh, you can you actually zoom in a little bit on oh, it so yes. that the audience can see yeah thank you <laughs> you're I welcome to, I always forget to do that uh, let me just do it one more okay thank you uh, all right so so creating the first step is obviously creating the form. And like I said, you uh, simply provide a form name. You can create as many sections as you need. Uh, each of the section is presented as a page to the user who's filling the form. So once you create it, uh, you can enable it. I'll pull up an existing form that I have created. So here is a sales handover form. And I just have a few set of fields that I can send out to my uh, sales team members as soon as an account is created to gather some additional information uh, which can benefit the uh, customer success team that's going to engage with the customer. Um, so moving on. So this is the first step, obviously having a active and enabled form. Uh, the next is you can obviously embed this form in success play. So if I have a success play here, uh, a typical onboarding success play, if I go in here, once you have an active form, you will see this new option called request information. The idea is that a form a fill task is very similar to completing a task. So you can, uh, you're used to the regular task in a success play, the request information tab task uh, now becomes available. And what it allows me to do is simply choose a form that I have created uh, to be linked to this particular task, add a message, that I want to provide to the person who's going to be filling out the task. And then of course, uh, I can choose the, uh, uh, you know, assignee, if it is a sales manager on the account, obviously if this is a sales handover form, I can do that. And uh, save this, okay? So that it can then be triggered based on um, uh, the successfully meeting the criteria. The other option is, of course, a manual way to send out the form. And this is a scenario where um, I um, imagine that I am a supervisor working with my team. I'm reviewing the accounts that are currently in escalation. And I can go into the uh, timeline view of this particular segment here. And at the place where I have take action, I can, assuming I want to know more about a particular uh, escalation that is currently in progress, I can simply say request information, choose the, choose the escalation form and assign it to a support person on the account that's currently working, have a short message and send it out. So there are two ways to send this out in essence, either via a success play or manually as one-off uh, forms and let me show you the experience of how it appears when a Zoe user in, uh, as a sales user in Zoe Direct receives a form. So what you're looking at here is a web version of Zoe. This is a beta product that's not publicly out here, uh, but a Zoe version, a web version of the product allows a user to look at their tasks, uh, look at accounts and look at touch points. It's a limited uh, capabilities. So as I can see here, I am logged in as a sales user with my Zoe account, and I have a task uh, to uh, fill out a sales handover form. I go in to complete the task. It springs up the particular form that I as an administrator had created and sent it via a success play or manually. And I can simply go in and uh, provide the information that's requested of me. Uh, I'll just uh, assume that this is a, a commit that we provided as part of this deal closing that we wanted the customer to be live by end of May. Uh, my team wants to know what uh, CRM systems they're using. 
and the contracted licenses. Now, here is a cool part uh, uh, that is additionally uh, useful. If you have data flowing in from CRM, uh, that current information that's available is also visible here. So this can also serve as means for verifying the information that's available. In other words, I can say, yep, this is right. The contracted licenses is 45, or I can say, nope, actually what the contract talked about was really 50 licenses. I can update that and I can choose to submit this. That's it, I'm done. This is the uh, experience of uh, filling a form. Uh, all right, so let me just uh, go back to one other piece that I forgot to mention in my uh, eagerness uh, is the fact that when you are creating a form, you also have the ability to uh, decide if fields are mandatory. So for example, I can flip certain fields as mandatory so that it will prompt the user who's filling out the form uh, uh, to, uh, you know, provide information. Okay. All right. So that was that. What I wanted to do now was move over and have Brittany tell us a little bit about uh, their scenarios and how seven rooms uh, leverage forms. So Brittany, I'm going to switch over to your presentation to avoid you having Perfect. to take over. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, hi everyone. So my name is Brittany Berman um, and I work for Seven Rooms. Seven Rooms is a B2B reservation delivery and guest engagement platform. Our goal is to help maximize revenue and streamline operations for um, restaurants, nightclubs, and bars throughout every touch point of our guest journey. Um, we're helping to build a rich CRM to bring back guests directly to the restaurant. So as you can see, our onboarding cycle at Seven Rooms is pretty extremely complicated, and we've got a very big team tackling this piece of our customer's life cycle. As Vijay said, there's multiple handoff points, um, places for information to fall through the cracks, and processes that could slow down our speed to go live. However, when we started to use Rapid Insights forms through Tatango, a lot of these pain points were alleviated. So Rapid Insights Forms have provided many benefits for our team, and I just want to outline a few of those really quickly for you all today. The first is that forms have helped to standardize processes and promote consistency no matter who is completing this task, whether it be the onboarding manager or the CSM. The second that is that we can verify and sanity check all of our data. We can identify at-risk accounts early on in the process so that we understand who could fail to go live. It helps between the handoff between all of our teams, and it does help to increase our speed to go live. However, most importantly, um, the biggest benefit of Tatango, but specifically these rapid insight forms, is that it will display all the data from multiple systems. So not only from our product, not only from our backend admin system, from Salesforce, but most importantly, from our team's brain. These forms are what help to aggregate the source of truth for Tatango. So Vijay asked me as we were presenting um, and going through this, this deck is kind of exactly how we build forms. And the answer is that we build forms actually backwards. So while we know the A to Z, we actually are building forms from Z to A. Um, and the way that Vijay just showed you that he builds a form, we actually do it backwards. So in technical to tango terms, this is how we build a form. The first is that we have to identify what a completed form leads to. So does that lead to another task? Does that lead to a different step in our process? Does it lead to making an account live? Uh, the list could go on and on, but this is really identifying what our quote unquote Z is. The next is we need to, sorry, Vijay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the next is that we need to agree on what a successful form looks like. The third is we need to figure out when the form should be triggered or if it should be manually assigned as Vijay just show, showed us. The fourth is to create the attributes and understand where that data is coming from. Again, it could be one of our systems or just from our team's brain. And the fifth is to actually add the attributes and create the form. So just a few examples for you. Um, the first is to detect at-risk accounts. Um, we have a form that helps us to get uh, a key inflection point in our customer's life cycle, which is the configuration call date. And that date clearly dictates a path for our accounts. 
If the date's not filled out, it will really quickly help us to realize that this account may be at risk. The second is to verify data. This is honestly a sanity check so that the Tango, do to Tango does remain the source of truth and that all of our systems match each other. And then the third is a seamless transfer of knowledge. This is key information for the next team that's taking over. Um, in this specific case, it's passing on from our onboarding team to our customer success managers to make sure that they have everything they need. So while these are only a few examples, I think we have about eight to 10 forms live right now for various parts of our customer's life cycle. And all of them play a key role in not only our team success, but for our customer success as well. Cool. Brittany, thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, what I did was I wanted to, uh, based on the descriptions that Brittany provided, I wanted to sort of uh, figure out a way of how you can take this and drive it within your organization. So I came up with sort of three broad steps that you can take. Um, so first is obviously identifying key uh, engagement points with your customer, you know, almost like a um, uh, customer mapping journey in the sense that when are you engaging with your customer at what points, the most obvious is, uh, you know, some of the most common things that will spring up is when you're, you know, a deal in progress or you're closing a deal, when you have onboarding, you know, obviously escalation is another point. There may be other points it's for you to uh, uh, figure out and then obviously identify what are those various process uh, uh, places where you want to hand off data from one team to another, right? So you, you uh, do that piece of uh, investigation within your own organization in terms of what uh, what applies. And then the next step is to identify those data points that are available but are not being recorded. And, you know, creating an inventory of that, you know, could be conversations that you talk to downstream teams. In a way, it's the Z to A that Brittany was talking about is identify a downstream team in terms of what information they're lacking or missing and uh, compiling that list so that the upstream team is sort of uh, on the hook to provide that information. And uh, there is a standardized process for that. And the timeliness of this information is extremely important as well. If you don't capture the information at the right time, it's lost. Uh, by that, it's when a deal is closed and sales handover, uh, it's not two weeks later, it's not four weeks later, it's you know, a day or two later when the deal is closed, when the information is fresh in your mind or the, uh, or the, uh, uh, the, the person's uh, mind, right? So that brings to the, the final piece is that identifying who's the uh, right stakeholder who has access to that information. And uh, it could be a, a single person, uh, you know, more than one person just identifying those pieces and, uh, you know, in fact, uh, from Brittany's deck, as you can see, even in a single onboarding process, they had different forms that touched upon different pieces being sent to different role players in that sense. So timing is key. And then having all the pieces identified and then uh, being able to uh, target the right uh, uh, players who have access to that information. All right. So with that, uh, hopefully, uh, with this information now uh, and with additional ideas that you have, I wanted to get a sense of, um, you know, if there are specific flows that would make sense for you. So, Lorena, if you can uh, send out our next poll and see if this time the poll works. If it doesn't, please feel free to use the chat and please answer this question that's on your screen. All right, I don't think the poll, I received the poll, so. Oops. Okay. So we have answers as onboarding, sales handover, Great. sales handover as well as onboarding. Yeah. Uh, sales handover and data verification. In fact, I wanted to just point out that one of the things when we originally built data verification wasn't a piece that we thought about, but when I spoke to Brittany and uh, learned more, uh, it was a uh, you know, very uh, interesting, unique case 
and I love the way that they leveraged uh, sort of the forms to also bring in the data verification piece and to sort of validate if the data was accurate or not. All right. Uh, we did so, have one that says other, and that's fire drills as well as customer management. Oh, okay. All right. Good. So I uh, missed uh, escalation as an option here, even though I used an escalation. That's a that's a great point. Okay. So. Uh, with that, uh, we are uh, at the um, uh, you know at the end of this uh, presentation. I'd like to summarize what we've learned so far. So obviously, the key is to identify patterns for your business, where either information silos are forming, or if a customer is being transitioned from one team to another. These are some just examples. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, Brittany gave some additional examples uh, as well. Uh, the rapid insight forms feature obviously makes it easy to standardize a process and to facilitate information gathering. Uh, the, the beauty about it is the fact that you can ask for a bunch of information together and it's presented in a very simple and easy to use manner and it's timely and is able to gather the information that you need uh, from anyone within the organization. Uh, like I said, you can send it to Spark and Zoe users. And why are we going through this trouble? What is it that uh, digitization affords is if, if you haven't digitized it, you basically don't know about it. And so that's the first step. Digitization, make sure that that information is available and can be shared. And then the bigger piece is really being able to operationalize all this. So if there is a certain information that's available, you can look for certain thresholds, trigger plays, uh, trigger workflows, um, You know, have your team sort of uh, have different workflows uh, go out based on that information and you can act on that information. So that's why digitization is the first step uh, towards this. And then, you know, then you can uh, drive it towards insight and action. All right. So um, obviously additional information on forms is available on the support website. You can very simply go to support.tango.com and search for uh, forms or streamline any of these words and you'll find articles for that. Okay, Lorena, that's it from my side. Thank you, VJ, and thank you, Brittany. Um, if you would like to type in your questions at this time using the Q&A icon, we will get started on, on that portion shortly. In the meantime, we understand that these, you, you know, we're all entering uncharted territories and we do know that businesses who will succeed are those that stay engaged with their customers. Tatango released a COVID-19 customer engagement toolkit to help support our customers and understand which customers to target and what to say to help engage them with relevant and timely messaging. If you're currently not a Tatango customer, you can get started with free community today. And yes, I did say that correct, free. Um, we're now offering all the core functionality of our customer success platform, including the COVID-19 customer engagement toolkit for free. If you visit wwwtotango sign up to get started today, it should take you 15 minutes and I know you will thank me later. In the meantime, we will start the Q&A portion and also um, be on the lookout for more webinars coming. If you go to tango webinars we definitely want to continue providing product webinars to help support you. And our next one will be a COVID-19 um, webinar. So in, we will get started with the questions. All Here's right, Lorena, uh -huh. yeah, I, I, can, I can directly, I see a bunch of questions. Uh, okay. If you want, I can start answering. Yes. Them. All right, cool. Uh, so one of the first questions that's being asked is, can forms be sent to external users or only internal? So great question, uh, Tamara. Uh, currently, the forms are primarily for internal users. What we wanted to do was to first give you the ability to harness all the information that's available within your organization. Um, and obviously, the next step is to go outside to send these forms to customers. And that is something that we have discussed and will certainly be heading there uh, in the future. But currently, it's internal uh, only. Uh, but but then again, it's also Spark and Zoe users. So, you know, it's pretty much your entire organization. Uh, great question on another question is, where is all this information for forms stored? Um, so one of the pieces that I mentioned when I was creating the forms, you have to add the fields to the form. Uh, so what 
the forms is just means for you to update the account information. So if these, in the, these uh, fields are added to the account profile, they're uh, obviously visible on the account profile and which is why the information, the fields have to be created first so that you can use them in forms. The idea being that, uh, you know, uh, if you create the fields, the information is available and can be, uh, um, uh, you know, used in rest of the pieces of the organization. Uh, I already are, uh, answered the customer piece. Okay, so uh, let me see. The Stan doesn't like the free type text field. I know Brittany also has uh, conveyed that to me. Yes, I'm aware of that. We'll certainly look at improving the input type field in terms of being able to add information. Uh, Sean asks, how do you manage non-compliance with a stick? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Sean, it's being sent out as a task, so it will appear as an overview task, and so that's the best approach uh, right now. Obviously, in the future, if we include uh, some additional flows around prompts or queues, uh, that will happen, but because it is appears as a task in everybody's agenda view, that uh, the form fill task that you send out will appear as overview task, and that's the way to manage compliance. Raymond asks, uh, does a user need a Zoe license to fill up the form? Yes, the user will need a Zoe license to fill up the form. Uh, certainly reach out to our uh, CS team and they can uh, you know, help you. Uh, can a salesperson create a new account using Rapid Insights form? Great question. Uh, I want to say yes, although I'll need to think about that a little more. Uh, okay, Matt Hong, can you use to track engagement with online events and then to bridge information between success blocks? So Matt, it's, it's, a, it's primarily means to, so let me repeat the question for everybody's benefit. Uh, so Matt says, could these be used to track customer engagement with online events or, they, or are they meant to bridge information between success blocks? Uh, so Matt, what they really are is means for you to get additional inf information into Totango. Obviously, you have your typical sources of CRM and other systems that you're bringing information into Totango, but there is a critical piece that's typically missing, like I started off explaining, and Forms is meant to help you fill that gap. Uh, uh, so Jackie is wanting to know how would the form open up for customers. Jackie, I still haven't built that feature out yet. I will certainly keep you in the loop when I build out the feature to send the forms to customers. But now that we have outcome success plans and portals, uh, I certainly see a way around, you know, to get there. And like uh, Lorena said, we'll be conducting a lot of webinars uh, in the future. Uh, uh, pretty frequent webinars, so stay tuned for the outcome success plans and the portal related one uh, sometime in the future and we'll cover that piece where there is a portal available for customers and I certainly see an option to send out forms there and customers can access those forms in the portal. That is how I will build it in the future. Uh, all right. So those are the questions. Uh, Lorena, do you. you like? Yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed this product deep dive webinar on Rapid Insight Forms with VJ and Brittany. Again, as I mentioned, we're planning on hosting more of these learning and best practice sessions every other week. And um, be on the lookout if you visit us at Tango Dash Webinars to see what's coming up, and then you can register. We hope you um, have a better use of Tatango to run your programs for your business and will continue to provide more insights in doing so. Thank you everyone for joining us.